Bird Spotlight Art Talks highlight member and friend artists of all ages and experiences. Welcome everyone to Any Squared Spotlight. This week we're um, highlighting Alejandro Vilches, who is has been around Any Squared for a very long time, uh, and he also goes by Fire Falco. You can find him on Instagram at fire falco, um, and we'll put his uh, Instagram in the chats um, and. Uh, he he's he's a sticker artist he's a digital artist he's been doing stuff on the streets with stickers for years um and you know and he's one of our youngest artists who regularly has come to any squared and so we're very proud of him and how he's been developing as an artist and kind of venturing into illustration which has been kind of cool to watch like that transformation um, and doing different kinds of characters. Um, I think we're, we're going to see some of his images and things um, in the slideshow that's going to play while he's talking. So um, without further ado, welcome Alejandro. So you get okay. to start. So, hello, everybody. My name is hey. Alejandro Vilches. So I'm just going to be drawing while I'm just talking. So let me think about my backstory. So I was born in 2004. So I'm 16 years old at the time of recording, 2021, turning 17 this year. I started, um, let's see, art. Um, I wasn't really into it growing up, like as a like, wee little child, like smaller. I got into it like when I was like 13 because so back in 2017 or 18, I, I always forget, but my brother, he's a artist also from Chicago. He goes by Frills. He's my older brother, born in 2000. He took me to an art show one day in the summer. I, I had no idea why. Like, he, he just took me to an art show, like, in Logan Square. And then from there, I'm like, these artists are pretty interesting. I like them. And I'm like, oh, I like this. I like that. And it opened my, it's like, that moment there is probably what shifted my entire life. If I didn't go there, I, would, I probably wouldn't even be here like have all the friends that I have. And from there, um, I, online, I went by Fire Falco. So I'm like, I wanna, I like birds. So I'm like, I wanna make a bird character. And I was not good at drawing at all. I was like the least skilled person I have ever met when I started doing art. I just did it for fun, like on priority mail stickers. Cause my brother, you know, he made stickers. He was a sticker artist. I was a sticker artist. I went by Fire Falco. I really don't go by that anymore. I think that was like my street art stuff. I mean, I still go by Fire Falco, but I'm no longer a street artist. I'm more of a, I see an illustrator, uh, not, not a graphic designer, just like an illustrator. I feel like over the years, I've developed a lot of different techniques, a lot of different art styles everything's changed throughout all the years and then i think i'm happy where i am at the moment i've been doing a lot of digital art and that's about how i got to where i am you know i got to be part of art shows growing up i got to meet a lot of artists i've probably made like at least a few hundred friends through art which is crazy at least like, like my closest friends right now are probably people who I've met because of artwork. And that's probably about it for my backstory. And time to talk about like what, how I do art, how, it's, how art is created because of me, how I am created, how I grow as a person. So how do I make art? I started off 
like I said, doing stickers with Sharpies. Sharpies are not that good to make stickers. Um, I think paint markers are better. But after a while, I'm like, I'm not really going anywhere with this. And this was like when I was like 15 years old. That was last year. So then I started painting, you know, acrylic. I started taking them more seriously because I was like, I want to do something more something that looks better, not just flat 2D, one color drawings on priority mail stickers, put them up, keep on doing the same thing over and over. So now, you know, I have an iPad. So that's where I do all of my artwork, most of it on Procreate. It's digital art, it's so much fun. It's so much more convenient. Like people are like, oh, digital art and versus physical art, they're both good. But as a digital artist, I would say you know, it's easier to use this. So that's how I create art, acrylic and digital. I have so many pieces, so many projects put on hold. I have so many, like I start one, I don't finish it. I have another one, I don't finish it. But there's this one I'm currently working on. I've put it on hold, I just touch it whenever I'm in the mood. I don't try to force myself to do art. I don't force myself to create because not only am I not having fun, but it won't come out as good as I want it to be because I don't, I'm, I don't connect with it. I'm not having a good time creating it. And yeah. And what is my work made out of? Like I said, um, acrylic. I have so much paint in my basement because my brother, he spray paints. That's one of his mediums when he's creating murals. And so do I. That's, we have so much acrylic and that's probably my main one. And digital art. Um, let me see the other questions. Something I like about my work is how not, you can really see that I have fun with it in the final product. In the process, when I have like a really good idea, I'm just like sitting there on my bed or I'm outside going for a walk. I take photos or whatever. I take photos and that's really my inspiration. Not only that, photos, but what I'm interested in. So like movies, music, video games, books, all the media that I consume, that's what really incorporates my artwork. As you can see, like on my Instagram, I have a lot of drawings about like musicians that I'm really into like, Bjork, you know, I was a huge fan of Bjork when I was like 15 or 14. So I drew her. Um, like I'm really into K pop right now. I, I never expected myself to do that. But I draw like a bunch of musicians, um, birds. I take photos of birds whenever I go outside because I see so many the pigeons. They're like, they're everywhere. You, you cannot step outside your house. I can't step outside my house without seeing them. If I see them, I'm gonna have like a photo shoot with them. And that's really what I use for like references, for images, for paintings. That's what I use. That's really like, as you can see here, there's a bunch of geese. I always go for walks by the river. I love taking photos of geese. Um, I feed them sometimes, you know, healthy stuff, not like bread and I feed them like fruit. And people are like, you know, don't feed the pigeons and all that, but you know, I'm just trying to, be their friends. I, I'd say that's really what influences my artwork, what I'm into and photographs, you know, I, pho photographing my life is just really fun. It's just really interesting to look back at. And then I'm like, oh, this photo is so beautiful. I want to incorporate that into my artwork. And then I paint it, I put it on canvas. It's just really nice to have pieces of my life and images of what I've seen put, created with my hands and not just also photographs. And a particular theme, I always like talking about this because when I'm creating artwork, there's not really a, too much of a deep meaning with it. It's more like I do it for fun. You can see in my artwork, like I said, all the things that I like, like colors, when it comes to colors, when it comes to the subject, even like text, it's what really where I am in my life right now. If you see like a drawing that I did, like, I don't know, let's say a random day, 
you can kind of pinpoint if you dissect my brain you could pinpoint like oh the reason he created this is because he liked this and this and this just everything it's just fun to have creative freedom when drawing when painting when illustrating it's just i just want to share that with the world but in an artistic way what i like what i see what i smell what i taste everything it's sort of like a lens through my eyes but created with my hands um what subject let's see so some artists and painters who have influenced and inspired me i actually don't know because like i said i started doing artwork when i was like 13 so i wasn't really thinking about what artists influence me or what artists are the reason why i create art so i don't really know i think i'm really inspired by i mean i am now but growing i wouldn't say i was motivated by other artists to create it was more like the art that i made was made because of what i liked to see what i like to do what just what i like in general so i don't think another person has influenced the way i create artwork it's more like i am the reason why i create this artwork and let's see oh in this question so this is one that i was thinking of where do you envision your work being in the future? So that kind of incorporates with what I'm doing at the moment. Something I really like to do is learn languages. So like I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States. And I don't really see myself living here in, in like 40 years because I just, you know, I, this is home to me, but I'm, I think I want to move to like Europe or Asia or one of those two continents, maybe like the UK or England, France, I don't know, but something, I learn languages right now because I like communicating with people. I like talking to people. If you know me, I'm a people's person. You know, I could always start up a conversation. I'm good with meeting people. So I think where I see myself in a few years, or where I want my future with art to be, I want to be in galleries, like across the world, maybe like, let me think, I was thinking like France, I want my, I want to have like a exhibit in like Italy, in Korea, those three places are probably the main places I want to have my artwork, France, Italy, and Korea, I think those three places are some of the places I've really been interested in other than the United States. Everything, all of my art is just in Chicago. I've like left the state twice in my entire life, Indiana. I've never left the country. I've left the city like a handful of times. I don't really travel that much, but once I, I have money after like working and you know, having school, because I still have so much time to think of my future. I want to travel. That's like one main thing I want to do with traveling. I want to travel. And not only traveling, if I continue my art, like as a career, because right now it's sort of like 50% art, 50% everything else. And I think that's a good balance. So maybe in the future, if I travel, I want to have my art in those places that I travel. And it's like, it comes along with me, not just my person, but my art, it's in my backpack, it's, it's in my pocket, it, it comes with me. Um, and yeah, that's probably where I see my future with art. And what, how do you want to utilize your art in different ways? So I think right now, I have a fair amount of like people who like my art, like a good number following. So where I want to utilize my artwork is I want to reach out to more people because it's not really more, it's not really about the, like, yeah, money's cool. And yeah, I need that. But I also want to meet people. That's, I always love going to art shows. 
I like making connections. I love meeting people. And those two, you know, they come together. And when I meet people, I can work with people. And then that makes more artwork, not only for me and for them. I like having people in my life. You know, I could never go wrong with too many people. You know, you just need good people in your life. If you have like a thousand people and 990 are good people, you never have too many people. And I guess that's where I want to utilize my artwork with connecting with more humans, and not even just humans, maybe like aliens or just it's forms of life, different forms of life I want to connect with. I want to be friends with. I want to just people. I want to know people and I want people to know me and I want great bonds with everything by reaching out because of my artwork. And let's see. Um, some personal experiences. I feel like I haven't really, I don't really put that too much into my artwork, like things I feel, ways I think. And I think that's all right because there's artists who have gone through like so much, like, I mean, I'm not gonna give like too many examples, but like they incorporate their mental state, the way they feel, their experiences into their artwork and they sort of create a story, sort of like, a, yeah, they story tell through their artwork. And I really like that about other artists, but I'm not like that. I don't really tell personal stories with my artwork because I haven't really experienced too much that I feel like it could put on a canvas. So I think with personal experiences incorporated into artwork, I don't think that's really, I don't think I could really do that, at least right now. I'm not sure how my art will change over the years, because trust me, I feel like it's changed a lot from 2017 to 18 to 19 to 20. Can't believe we're already in 2021. I think that's okay though. But I feel like, yeah, that's basically how with my personal experiences. And I'm not sure. If all these other questions, like, I think I've answered enough, but I feel like there's more to tell with me and as an artist. So what I like to do with like artwork, I, I, I don't know why they include this before, with materials, when I feel a way like happy or not really energetic, or I look back at the photos that I've taken, I'm like, this photo is nice. And then I go online, I try to look for color palettes that sort of match the mood. And once I find like a few colors, I'm like, this is how I felt at the moment. I'm like, oh, this photo from, I don't know, like September, 2018. I'm like, this photo, I remember how I felt that way, the way that exact day. I remember everything about this day. So I'm gonna try to sort of express these different emotions and thoughts. And cause you know, life changes so fast and I could sort of still pinpoint certain thoughts from certain days. So I'm like, this color connects with this thought that I had back then. And then from there, it's sort of like, with these colors, I'm gonna sort of paint a picture, not really too much of a story, but enough to tell you this, these colors is how I thought that day. And I think that's pretty interesting with like storytelling. If I know that doesn't make too much sense, but like it, it will, if, if you kind of think about it, it, it might. And I think with all these, what's it called, these questions that, I, you know, talking about art, if um, anyone has like one or two questions, maybe like a few, we can continue talking about how I am as a person and also maybe more about art. I think I have so much to talk about both actually. So that's my, a little break for right now, maybe like a minute or so. Do we have, do we have anybody who has some questions for, for Alejandro? 
And if not, that's okay. It looks like Tati does. Let's see. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Hi. So, um, after, so do you see yourself working as an artist? doing like what do you think you're gonna do because um you do do street art too and mm -hmm. illustration do you see yourself ever doing painting is it too messy for you do you see yourself ever oh. or working with you know like where do you see yourself later oh that's actually i, I don't know yeah that actually kind of brings up like I forgot what I was gonna say before, but that actually brings up. So before, like I've painted a few murals and in the past, my biggest one was probably over the summer in like August, 2020, yeah, 2020. And then I was like, that was like the biggest accomplishment I've ever created with artwork. It was like 15 feet tall, 15 feet for a 15 year old. How am I gonna do this? I painted with like three other artists um, it was a fun experience and I think acrylic paint, like painting, like I don't, like I said, I don't really do street art, but other than digital artwork and illustration, I feel like acrylic is something I'm gonna, um, it's not only like my main thing to go to other than digital, but that's something I think I want to like continue for so many years. I want to continue painting so I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I want to continue painting as an artist for many years to come. Just, it's just, it's one of my favorite mediums. Yeah. Sometimes during the summer last year, first thing I would do <clears throat> waking up is, you know, I go downstairs, maybe eat some food, but then I, music, that's really what helps me with artwork. I had like just music blasting next and then i set up my table i had a bunch of paint brushes out a bunch of acrylic paint out, and then i just had a bunch of sometimes i if i had ideas i do i put out canvases but sometimes when i just wanted to like sort of doodle just create a freedom it's not really about creating a product it's more just about creating something for myself sometimes i'd be like this looks nice and then I throw it out because that was just for fun. Or I paint over it. It's just, I guess, artwork for me. It's not only about creating things like products, like not even to sell, but just to put out to the world. But it was also about just having fun. I never really saw myself like a few years ago, paint just for fun, just, just for fun. I wanted to paint and make something out of it and have fun but now it's not really about making something it's just about the experience like that sounds kind of cheesy but it's true I, I, like I used to think that like it's like oh it's about the friends you make along the way I'm like oh it really is it really is about the experiences you make along the way so I I see myself being a painter in the future if, that sort of answers your question yeah thoroughly i have two compliments one um i love the way that you relate color to memory and experience and feeling and so you look at colors and you're like i'm just gonna make an art piece based off of this palette i think that's pretty cool and two um i agree with you about um going to travel different spaces or places in the world and making <laughs> Cutting off. Uh, I froze for a second. We're back. But um, but yeah, so those are my two compliments. Thank you. I I think it's, yeah, like you said about traveling like a green, I think that's something I really that's like one of my number one things to do. People are like, oh, why are you young or you should travel in the world and i'm like i've never really i've never really been outside of just my home i mean not like literally my house but like chicago 
but after getting into media like non-american media you know of course i listened to mexican and like spaniard spanish music i wasn't that's what i grew up with so i wasn't really like i want to go to mexico because my family they're like oh yeah we should go to mexico i'm like yeah that sounds cool but it's not really like something i it's like i would want to do it but if they went with me it's not really something i just do on my own if since they brought up the idea i'm like okay but it's not really going to like mexico and all that that's not really something i i look forward to it i just don't really see myself wanting to do it i would do it i just don't really want to but after recently opening like i said media it really opened my eyes what is out in the world i recently you know over the summer i've since you know quarantine i've done so much online like i've gone into k-pop i've gone into a bunch of dramas none of them are nothing i know media i don't care what language it is if it's not english i will consume it if it's english i'm like yeah okay maybe but if it's not in english i'm like i really really want to further invest my time into this like I listen to music in like Italian I listen to music in Tagalog like Filipino language like Cantonese Mandarin you know the Chinese languages um everything I just really I see myself wanting to sort of how do I say be more open-minded about what's out in the world and I think that really incorporates also into my artwork because I was talking to my parents once and then I was like, hey, remember that Chinese buffet we used to go to before quarantine? And they're like, yeah, they had really nice art there. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. I'm like, what's, I'm like, what's sort of like the, you know, I come from Mexican descent, you know, 100% Mexican. I'm like, what sort of, Mexican artwork that is sort of connected to my family and then I started looking into like not only like Mexican artwork from ancient times like I mean when I say like 1800s that's not really ancient but like I look into different artwork from all around the world N not modern art like you know like modern I don't know what time frame modern art is after the 20th century it's sort of like, I want to look at artwork from Mexico, from Europe, from Asia, from Africa, South America, different. I want to look at artwork from everywhere, not only media, but artwork. And that's really interesting. I find artists that I never heard of before. They're like, I, no, they're not nobodies, but they're like, not as popular as like you know Frida Kahlo and Picasso you know those are like the handful of people that's you know big artists but once you do more research I never really thought art would be about research but it's about like you try to incorporate the little things because let's say everyone consumes the number one like artists, like that's just in visual art, like like I said, Frida Kahlo, like Keith Haring. I'm, I'm not like putting them down. Like I think they're amazing artists. But if like everyone consumes these artists, there's not really too much variety within artwork. But once you sort of find these smaller artists who created these beautiful pieces, if you go on YouTube, Google, and you sort of incorporate that into you sort of taken their artwork into your brain it creates so much more ideas so much more variety not only in ideas but in artwork and i think that's really i really encourage that sort of be open-minded and step out of your comfort zone not i'm not saying with like creating artwork like you create what you want but consuming like artwork into your brain and your eyes and your ears you have to 
sort of be open-minded about what others create, not just about what you create, but about other people's artwork visually and and senses. That's about, what's it called? That's what I have to say about international stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna look through the comments. So if there's like any more questions at the moment while I look through these comments, let me know. People yeah. can make comments. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna interrupt. So what's your favorite medium uh, so far from what you experienced and what are the other mediums have you approached that you feel like you have control of? Actually, oh, that's that's actually pretty, oh yeah, I never actually thought of that because um, what I see as convenient is digital artwork because it's at the tip of my fingers, but I feel like my favorite medium like even though i create more digital artwork on a tablet i feel like my favorite artwork is a paintbrush and acrylic because i like like you know sometimes it could get messy but that's sort of what i really like about it because it's sort of it's like i get paint on my skin and my clothes and that's sort of like oh these are my battle scars from my art making it's sort of like when you're painting acrylic, that's like permanent. And you have to, sometimes you see a brush and it's a, it's labeled like, oh, this is what the brush does. But sometimes, oh, it's damaged. It doesn't actually do what it says. Sometimes you have to, with acrylic, unlike digital art, because it's more forgiving, digital artwork, acrylic, I like how you have to take risk with it and how you have to sort of, it's sort of, you have to ride with the waves, you have to go with the flow, you have to ride with the tide, you know, you have to sort of just let it happen. You have, you don't have 100% control. I mean, artists, like that every artist has different control of what they create. But if I see like, this is one artist, I forgot her name. Um, While I look for her, I'm gonna continue talking about this, but like, with it's it's crazy how people create artwork with acrylic paints i don't understand how they make it look so perfect how they do this this colors everything so it's sort of like not only does acrylic paint and painting help me improve on my skill but it's sort of like a life lesson you know every time you paint it's sort of you know you can't it's, it won't always be perfect because sometimes you know if whether it's the paint or the paintbrush or the water you use or how you feel everything incorporated you don't have full control over how you create artwork it's sort of like you just have to let things be the way they are on the journey of painting sometimes the final product won't be like how you you don't like how it looks because you know oh i should have done this different but you know you're not always in control and that's sort of how why i really like acrylic paint i'd say now i create i work more digitally at the moment and that doesn't mean i'm not going to go back to acrylic like i said i have this one painting i i only touch it whenever i want to it's not really something I push myself to create. It's like, it's sort of like a sketchbook in a way. You know, you just pick it up, you grab it, you paint it, or you draw in it, sketch in it. But this, I want to show this off one day, but the time has to come once I actually create it. Um, and now that I was searching up, there's this one artist. I love how she creates painting. artwork. You should show us that painting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm working on. Yeah, you, you might as well. And then, and I'm sorry I interrupted. You should continue <laughs> to say what you were going to say. Show us the painting, hun. So, like, this is all I have so far. Like, I might it's like a bunch of geese. I sort of got inspiration from this, like I said, from all these ancient Chinese artwork. Like, I'm not making this about Chinese culture. It's more like, oh, that's what my inspiration was 
And then I'm like, how do I incorporate their sort of art style and their techniques? Because I watch videos about how they create art. And I'm like, that's really interesting. So I try to like teach myself practice how they create artwork. These, I don't know how long ago ancient times were, but hundreds of years ago before any of us were born. I'm like, these artists, it's crazy. It's kind of simple, but their artwork is beautiful. And these geese, like we saw on the slide before, it's like, I love birds and geese are like up there because I always see them and I'm familiar with them. So that's something sort of what's connected, I guess, with my culture, like me. My culture is birds and water and the river. And then I just got these colors. This is like three colors. I'm not really happy too much with like, let me think like the pattern on this bird, but like mostly on this bird, like, um, I mean, I'm not gonna like show in your face, but like I might, it's always about, like I said, I'm gonna only touch this whenever I feel like it. So I'm gonna paint over stuff. I'm gonna add new stuff. I'm gonna just keep on changing it along the way. I don't really have a perfect idea of how I want to finish this. But once it's finished, I'm gonna, you can't really see my process with just an image. Only I know the process of how this is gonna go. And I think that's something like when I look back at this painting, I'm gonna be like, wow, I remember this Sunday in 2021 in February when I did this and that's like, it's crazy. This is sort of like my, it's like, it's like a storybook. It's just sort of, yeah, I'm gonna take pictures along the way. That's what I was thinking. Like, this is sort of like a, a story to me. There's no really meaning behind it, but it's sort of how, only I know how I felt and how I did things along the way. So I think, yeah. That's that's the painting that I was working on. And feel, it's not gonna be finished for forever. Maybe a few months, maybe a few weeks. It's it just like I said, whenever I pick it up, who, who knows how and what I'll do. I th I'm uh I've noticed over the years that I've known you, you you have a consistent visual vocabulary, like simple shapes, creating these images and and what you have developed from that is really cool i like how your palettes are going these days it's kind of amazing how how you're using color i'm i think that's yeah, like yeah. a very deep development in you over the last couple of years and it's it's exciting to see and um but you but the bird theme is very consistent <laughs> although you've done yeah. other things and i did share some it's of the face. images um that you've been doing um actually maybe i should uh share the um share your instagram because you have some of those images on instagram like some of your newer stuff that you've been doing that includes oh, yeah. um yeah so uh people let's yeah you're painting people and you're doing different kinds of images and different kinds of animals like from the mm -hmm. turtle the turtle one, I know that Tati said she really liked the turtle one. <laughs> yeah, these are fun. These are like really fun to create. I've only really done something like this in a while, but I might yeah. soon because it's fun. I like your little palettes at the top. That's we can see like your with, thoughts. With other artists, it's like I see how they have like different versions of an art piece. And I'm like, I want to incorporate that sort of with myself. So I, I go through like so many different color palettes, different patterns. I'm like, which ones? Like, um, I pick like three or five. Which ones of these look the best to me? I ask other people, like, if I'm like in a video chat with some friends, I'm like, which one do you like more? And they're like, oh, this one. I'm like, you're wrong. I like this one more. And then, yeah, I just sort of try to like, change my artwork along the way. Like, you see, that's the original sketch. And then mm -hmm. the final product, it's like kind of, it's sort of just a base idea. I, mm -hmm. I cruise it along the way and do different things. 
I'm just sharing some of your things so other people can see like some of your process because some of these have a little bit of process in them, right? Like, yeah, like this and like so many from like start to finish. Like that's, that's the sketch. And then, and then the final product, I just, I haven't really been drawing like digitally in a while. Because what I've been really doing in my free time recently is like studying and that's not for school, but that's just for myself because I want to learn a lot of different things once like just I want to learn a lot in my own time about what interests me. And like I said, language learning, that's something I try to do. Like it's, it's fun. It's kind of fun. It's not really, I don't really have a, or an angle about what I want to do other than I want to communicate with people. And it's like always like, you should have an end goal for this thing that you're doing. And you know, maybe I wanna live internationally and that's why I'm learning languages. And I guess that's sort of what I've been doing in my free time other than our work. Um, let me see what I've actually had recently. Mm -hmm. Are you there? like online to take these programs. They're not really that good, but you know, make do with, I just sketch. I need a sketch. And then from there, I could actually, I have more fun creating sketches rather than forcing myself. Oh, is that your, oh, you drew him. <laughs> oh my God, you drew him. <laughs> I'm going to text him and tell him to get back on. Oh, there he is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're I don't know you're back. You're back. You just, you yeah. cut out. After we all lost you. We're finally back. Yes. Yeah. So, like, that's about what I was saying about, like, creating artwork and having sketches. I recently started, um, since the weather's nicer, I started going, like, on bike rides or squats around. Something I like to do is go down just these small streets and these alleyways that I've never really familiar with and that's really sort of like how do I describe it it's sort of new journeys in familiar areas but they're not really familiar to me it's like I grew up in this neighborhood Avondale around Logan Square you know sort of like semi north side but once I go through these different pathways I discover a lot of different things. Like I used to, I guess what I like to do when I'm in the summer, I used to like to go dumpster diving. And then from there, I was like, oh, these alleyways are beautiful and they're peaceful and it's nice outside and it's bright outside. I really want to do that more on the weekends. And not only do I go down, just, you know, take strolls down the alleyways, but I find these beautiful views, these trees, these, Additional block formations I've never seen before. I think I talked about this um, when I was in Helen's um, ASM program. You know, we were talking about unfamiliar places that people know about, but it's sort of special to you. And I guess what's special to me is I have not discovered every square inch of this neighborhood. And I, I don't think I'm even close to being done with exploring and being done with this neighborhood and seeing what's in it. Like over the summer or over the weekend, I'm, like I said, like not even two miles away from me, I found this small little garden, like really close to me because I went down this specific road, this specific street, and then I found it. I used to always pass by it. And then I just sat there for an hour. I started, I grabbed my notebook I started sketching the flowers. I started sketching a truck. Or well, my friend, he was actually with me. Um, he, I gave him my notebook. I'm like, hey, you, like, he's, he's like, hey, can I draw something? I'm like, okay. And I guess what I like about sketchbooks, I want to actually this. This is like my seventh sketchbook. The other ones, though, I try to force myself to fill up the pages because I'm like, I want to have a story. But with this one, I'm sort of pacing myself 
I'm sort of more patient with myself now than I was in the past because like I said, I used to force out ideas and that's not good. And that's why I don't really draw like every single day because if I do, I'm just gonna not have fun. It's, I guess it's about drawing. It's about having fun and not really about creating a product. And that's sort of what I wanna do with this sketchbook. Like, as you can see, like, I drew some like simple flowers. I like pace myself and, or maybe try to time myself when I'm creating these drawings or like this duck, he's in the water and there's a reflection off the water and it's blank. I just try to keep it simple, but I have fun with it. And I only have two pages filled up. My friend, he, he drew a truck and he drew geese inside or ducks inside of it. The truck and the duck, the, the, the two ducks inside the truck, the pickup. And I think that's, that's really funny. Yeah. So does anyone have any questions, more questions or comments? I saw some comments in the, in the, uh, in the chat. And even if you're not on video, you can make some comments. So we're opening it up. I just like to say Alejandro, um, Rose, I've, you inspire me. I started out our later in life. But here you have such wisdom and I, I, okay. And just some of the quotes I put on there that you had mentioned, like new journeys in familiar areas and how you said alleyways are beautiful and peaceful. The formations and how you express yourself and share that is so beautiful. Um, and how you said you, uh, there's a small garden you sat out there. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> Uh, for an hour and and just patient with yourself and that's in that's encouraging to all of us i just thoroughly enjoyed listening to your story and and uh your passion for art uh, i love the two ducks in the truck and you had fun with your friend and um but that you have this great and th passion and desire to learn more more so i just you're awesome <laughs> and tracy Thank you, you know, for um, doing this and sharing. Um, how, I want to ask you a question, Alejandro. When did you realize you started liking art or started doing art? Oh, actually, I, oh yeah. So um, like before, um, I, not only did I start creating like artwork when I was like 13, because like you said about, it's never like you started, I guess, later. I feel like I started later when I was 13, because that's like half my life, more <laughs> like already in the upper half and I'm only 16. And I guess I started having fun with it when, um, not when I started, I sort of started because I wanted to test that out. But I, I think I started started having more fun with it when um, I picked up painting, when I was mm. like the same age. Um, but from the ages 13 to like, 14 or 14 to 15 I sort of like I said I forced myself to create artwork mm -hmm. but over over quarantine that's when I um had time like more with myself and I really with like other artists and other like school and I sort of had so much time free time so I started having fun with it when I when um 2020 like I started that's when I finally found out this is how I want to do things now. Like I sort of changed my ways of creating our work. So I'd say when I was like 15 years old at the beginning of maybe April of last year, because that's already a year ago, because that's sort of when I started exploring, like I said, my neighborhood. But from there, because I had such a good time, I had so much fun. I had really nice memories about going around and going for walks and going by the river and looking at ducks not only did I have the greatest memories of last year there or even in my entire life from quarantine but that's when I also started incorporating those moments and those memories into my artwork like there's this song um I really like it's by, it's by this artist her name is Taeyeon it's called drawing our moments and then 
it's not in English, but when I was reading the lyrics, I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. Like you draw your best moments in life because you know you have bad moments and if you draw those bad moments, you won't have fun with it or you won't really enjoy the process. So I guess you know, drawing our moments, it's always about drawing not only the bad and the good, but throughout the way, it's sort of just freeing your thoughts into your artwork. So I guess to answer your question, I had fun, like more fun creating artwork at the beginning of last year in April, because that's sort of when I had some of the greatest moments in my entire life. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alejandro. Share the Thank link to the song. Oh uh, yeah, I put it on Spotify. It checked it out for like three seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, recently I started um what's it called listening to ballads and stuff like because they're so peaceful like pianos and stuff that's why i listen to in the morning like you go through different phases in your life listening to music like everyone goes through their um like i don't know like rock phase and then their pop and then their um uh, i don't know everyone goes through their nirvana phase and then their gorillas like but along the way it's sort of like, I, I really like ballads. I like how they're peaceful and lovely. And I guess, yeah, lovely. And they remind me of good times because some of the best music that I like at the moment, I discovered over the summer. And over the summer is when I sort of had the best moments. Like I was answering the other question. That's one, not only was last year, the summer when I had the most fun creating artwork, but it's also at the same time I had the best memories in my life. And not only that, but it's also when I discovered some of the best music that I listen to now. I every it's so weird. Last year was such a bad year because you know there was this um we all know what happened, but like you know, 2020, the the, the yeah, we won't speak of it, but 2020, um, it's kind of weird because not only was it a bad year for everyone, but even me, but that's when I had the best memories and the best moments, I guess, because I got time to, I'd say I grew pretty good so far as a person. I used to be like this um, edgy teenager when I was like in middle school. I'm really glad I grew up mentally. Like that sounds, okay, no, let me rephrase that. I'm kind of glad I grew as a person throughout, um, not only like, I'm, I'm glad I kind of know the direction I want to go to in life. You know, right now I'm glad I'm, I experienced what I did in the past because even though they were awkward moments, I, oh my God, okay, I'm sorry. But like I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> in early in life, you have to experience like really, it's weird. You have to experience bad times, but that helps you grow as a person. And I went through the most awkwardest, most weirdest, most hurtful, mentally, like confusing. You, I went through the most confusing times in my like early teens. And I'm glad that I did that before because now with all the time I got to think of myself, that's sort of when I sort of got to grow as a person and have my happiest moments in life. Well, does anyone else have any questions for Alejandro? I think we're going to wrap up our uh, our uh, question and answer portion. Um, last call, last call, have questions. Um, I don't have a question, but I have another uh, comment too, because I, I really related with um, growing up in Avondale and going to the river and going there to draw and just relax. So it was really cool to see that other people were doing that too and other people were inspired by like the exact same area that I would hang out at too. Oh yeah um you did you grow up in Advendale too? Yes yeah right on Belmont um, California. Yeah because um I I was talking with one of my good childhood friends in kindergarten I like grew up with them and then I like that mural you did by the Guanajuato at Bucket of Blood I, I saw them and then I was like wait it's like Natalia you're um she like your aunt or is she related to you and she's like yeah that's my aunt her uh, Miranda I, like oh, I grew yeah. up with her 
That's and we graduated that. together Damn, uh, from so cool. kindergarten to eighth grade. And I'm like, oh, it's such a small world. Like, that's my friend. But then their family members also like my friend. So like I guess like I said I like making connections. That's cool. That's I've never had a mutual friend with my niece before. I feel so old. Yeah. Like, at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. So would anyone else like to ask a question before we wrap it up? Yeah, uh, Alejandro, do you have any uh, plans to do a series of just birds or your favorite birds or? Oh, Anything. actually, uh, um, I think so, because, like, in the beginning of my art career, um, I guess, yeah, my art career, um, I only drew this one and this fire falco, but recently, since, like, um, like I said, I like going out, taking photographs, I use those more as a reference, these different things that I see, especially birds. Not only do I see pigeons, but... I see so many different birds that I've never seen before. Like I started creating characters out of these different images that I take. Um, like you can see on my Instagram, like whenever um, I knew a bird, I gave him a name. His name is like Percy. He's on, I forgot, I kind of created comics, but I just kind of, that's just fun. Like I get back to that whenever comics but I started creating these birds, these birds that I see, and then I sort of make them come to life. I mean, they're already alive, but I sort of, sort of, what's the word? I, um, I don't know what the word is, but I draw them the way I think they, not really feel, but just, I try to experiment as much as I can. And then those experiments with the birds become a final product and then that's what is created as a series of my birds that I draw, my illustrations, my bird illustrations, experiments to final product. So yeah, I, I see myself creating like more unique, different variety of this bird series that we were mentioning. All right, that's cool. Also, I didn't know your uh, your brother's what frills. Uh, um, how is he doing? Um, he's actually this morning he went to San Diego with um let's see he's like i don't know exactly i don't know the full detail but i think there's like an art thing going on over there like gonna create a mural with like sam rock and other artists so um he's not here right now but he's pretty good um like i said it was just his 21st birthday recently so like if y'all like want to go, go or like you know get a drink with him or, like hit him up or something <laughs> so yeah, go to san good. fran get a drink with him yeah, I go to San Fran. I think he's only going to be there for like a week or so over the weekend. I think he'll be back. Huh. Like he's in, coming to Chicago back. Okay. Um, yeah, he's good. I see him like, we talk sometimes. Like, you know, he's like, I guess, yeah, um, about like art stuff. And it's like, hey, check this out. I like this. I like that. And then that's, I guess he's like, you know, he's like, hey, um, Alejandro, Alex, what do you think of these colors that I use to create this art piece? And I'm like, uh, you should ch change this and that, like maybe slightly alter it. It's like, oh, I never thought of it like that. So yeah, we like bounce ideas off of each other. Like I asked him, hey, what do you think of this? And he's like, um, maybe change this a bit. I'm like, oh, you're right. That makes it look better. So yeah, he's good to sort of create art with. That's Collaboration. So we're going to just wrap up this part of our discussion and thank you Alejandro for a great talk thank you for having me and, and 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 thank you for for sharing with us all your thoughts um uh it's been wonderful and uh thank you so much yeah I didn't think I was going to survive an hour because like but once I just start talking um <laughs> Just, I continue, and then I guess it's sort of like you guys sort of like opened up my mind about the way I think. That's just, I like having conversations. Like sometimes I'm on the phone, I have nothing to talk about. A few hours later, I have so many ideas to, to think about, 
um, yeah, this is really good for me. And I'm glad I can speak and share with you guys. Thank you so much. It's been great. And next week we're... <laughs> And next week we're we're having a uh, squeak starzula, so uh, come on back. Oh, yeah. Check social media for future zooms and future streams.